Mercury climbs above 30 degrees Celsius. The pride, two males, five sisters and their cubs, lays around together. Hunting now, in the midday sun, could leave them in danger of overheating. For the males, with their huge manes, that could prove deadly. It's also a waste of energy. With no tree cover to camouflage them, these ambush hunters have little chance of surprising their prey. There's no need to exert yourself in this time of plenty. It's April. As the day draws on and temperatures drop, the rains begin to fall. But they're less frequent now. Soon the dry season will come and the wildebeest will move on. It's bad news for the lions. This could be the last storm of the season, and they must take advantage. They wait for nightfall.
darkness, the lionesses of the pride hunt together. They spotted one of last year's calves on the edge of the herd. The sisters work as a coordinated group, stalking their prey. Encircling the yearling, they creep closer, cutting off all escape routes. He's oblivious to the silent threat, and now they're just 30 meters away. third of all wildebeest will end their lives this way, in the jaws of a lion. For the wildebeest, daylight brings safety. The swollen herd has now divided into smaller groups. Mothers with newborns congregate together in protective nursery herds. The aggressive and territorial bulls, their horns spanning nearly a metre, form bachelor herds, or strike out alone. The lioness has managed to conceal her kill from scavengers overnight. She now drags it back to the pride. The male has already taken his share, and now her sisters make the most of what remains of last night's success. For the wildebeest, the Serengeti grasslands are the perfect nursery. The volcanic soil is rich in calcium, potassium and sodium. As the new mothers eat the grass, these valuable nutrients pass into their milk, helping the baby's bones to develop properly. Calves born here will be strong. To keep their milk flowing, the mothers must drink water every day. But the wet season is coming to an end. The search for water is becoming more and more difficult. There's one last water hole on which they've always depended. But an alarming sight greets them. It's disappearing fast, drying up in the heat. What little water is left to drink has become so concentrated with mineral salts that it is becoming poisonous. The nutrients which once gave the newborn strength could now kill them. The situation turns deadly. For the calves, this thick mud is treacherous. They desperately try to keep up with their mothers, but they only become more stuck. Panic sets in as the wildebeest struggle to free themselves from the quagmire. In the rush to escape, mothers and calves are separated. Families are getting mixed up. Confusion reigns. Close up, mother and calf can identify each other by smell. But in this herd of many thousands, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. <laughs> No other female will help a lost calf.
some calves aren't so lucky. Separated from its mother and the safety of the herd, the tiny calf quickly weakens. Its plight doesn't go unnoticed. Lappet-faced vultures are scavengers. They usually feed on carcasses. Though this calf is still alive, it's fading fast. The vultures jealously guard it, tentatively pecking at its hide, sensing a meal isn't far away. Finding water is not the only crisis. The wildebeest depend on short green grasses, but these shoots have been completely stripped away. It's clear the herd can no longer survive here. They must leave. For the first time, the calves are about to embark on an epic journey across the Serengeti. Their parents know what lies in store, a 3,000 kilometre trek in search of food and water. The eldest wildebeest have made this journey more than 20 times. Over the next seven months, they will all live as nomads. Tied to their territory, the lions are forced to watch their prey walk away. In their thousands, wildebeest, zebra and Thompson's gazelles move on. Hard times and months of hunger lie ahead for these cubs. The same is true for the newborn wildebeest. Only one in five will return here alive. It's thought wildebeest can smell the rains. The scent of storms 50 kilometers to the north lures them onward with the promise of fresh pastures. After many days on the march, the herds now pass through the western corridor of the Serengeti. And they've reached a welcome landmark. In the middle of the bleak belt is a green oasis surrounded by fresh grass. All around, the calves are confronted with strange sights they've never seen before. Trees and new, unexpected neighbors. The mothers haven't drunk for two days. By now, they're desperate. The wildebeest travel in separate groups, but now bachelor males, females and calves mingle by the waterhole. But there's danger here. The long grass conceals a familiar foe. Three lionesses rule this territory. At first glance, they're a motley crew. The eldest is scarred and half blind, but a terrifyingly experienced hunter. Another is heavily pregnant. For her, the stakes are high. She must eat. But together, they know every inch of this oasis. Veiled by the long grass, success seems certain.
but they're being watched. Can't hide her irritation. But the oasis draws animals like a magnet. Lionesses take up their practiced positions. The hunt is on again. This waterhole is too dangerous and too small for the wildebeest to linger here. They must keep moving, chasing the rains. As they plough northward, the landscape changes. Away from the volcanoes, there is no ash-forged rock beneath the soil. Out on these plains, the soil is deep. Here, trees can take root. The wildebeest pass through the territories of many predators on their relentless trek. But some predators have no set territory. This cheetah mother and her young family are able to follow the migrating herds for hundreds of kilometers. She has six energetic and hungry kittens, a much larger litter than the usual three or four. She must hunt constantly. It is a precarious life, and the odds are against her family's survival. Just one in twenty cheetah cubs will make it to adulthood. Cheetahs usually hunt small prey. But this mother has her eye on a bigger prize. A wildebeest calf is lagging behind the rest of the herd. Cheetahs lose half their kills to other predators. So the mother drags her prize into the long grass to hide it. Wildebeest herds are already far ahead. It's now late June. After trekking northward for more than a month, the first groups have reached fresh pastures. And finally, water. 
a Meti River. It's a shallow watercourse, barely more than a series of pools in places. But it draws an abundance of life. The young wildebeest come face to face with an eye-opening, brave new world. For the exhausted wildebeest mothers, the grumetti simply marks the difference between life and death. The urge to drink is overwhelming. The new smells and strange noises are distracting. The adults are tense, suspicious of an attack from behind. The shadowy tree-lined banks are ideal lion territory. But the river proves too tempting. seem to understand the danger. Gradually, they creep back to the water's edge, the desperate desire to drink surpassing their fear. down with a force of over a ton. It is the strongest bite of any animal. It drags the wildebeest deeper into the pool. But the situation quickly turns into a standoff. The adult wildebeest is strong and holds fast. The water here is too shallow for the crocodile to pull him under. Only one can win this battle. The wildebeest bides his time. His strategy pays off. As the evening draws in, calm returns to the river. Even now, it throngs with life. Tonight, there is a full moon. Tomorrow will be an important day for the herds gathered by the river. In the morning light, the adult bulls are fighting. The rut is on. Males are battling for territories and for the chance to mate. 
Now five months old, the calves stay well out of the way. It will be four or five years before they're fighting these noisy battles. By then, their short, stumpy horns will have grown into fearsome, meter-wide weapons. The rut takes place over just three weeks. So that in eight and a half months' time, back on the short grass plains of the Serengeti, the newborns will be delivered all at once. It's the end of July. The pastures along the river have been stripped of grass. The forest is dry and bare. Again, the herd must move on, following the rains in search of food and water. Only now, many of these mothers are carrying new life. They make a last trip to drink from the shallow pools. The calves are now six months old. Though still dependent on their mother's milk, they're becoming bold growing in confidence. One wanders too far ahead. The youngster doesn't have the strength to match this five meter long ambush hunter. Mother watches anxiously from the shore. But this time, there is no miraculous escape. The crocodile will take days to dismember and devour his kill. The herds can only turn and leave. It's August, the heart of the dry season. The Grumetti River now lies over 100 kilometers behind the wildebeest. As temperatures soar to 35 degrees, they trudge 10 kilometers every day. This is the toughest leg of their journey. The only food is dry, scrubby grass. But it's much less nutritious than green shoots and not enough to sustain them. Adults can lose up to a third of their body weight and survive. But the calves are vulnerable. And their situation is about to become even more precarious. Whether sparked by lightning or increasingly by human activities, the dry grass catches like tinder. For small animals, it's an inferno. But with a top speed of 80 kilometers an hour, the wildebeest can outrun the flames. The blaze looks devastating, but this landscape has seen many fires. By burning back old grass and trees, fresh shoots will soon emerge. But it's no consolation for the exhausted wildebeest. little grass remained 
is now burnt to cinders. There is nothing to eat for miles. Throughout this epic journey, the greatest threat to the calves' survival is not predation, it's starvation. Three quarters of those who don't make it die of hunger. The herds are now close to the Kenyan border. For over three months, they followed their noses for a thousand kilometers, sniffing the far off rains in the air. The older wildebeest have been here before. They know that fertile pastures with good grazing aren't far away. But one formidable obstacle stands in their way. The River Mara. Animals travel here from miles around. The 400 kilometer long river is a precious source of drinking water. Even at the height of the dry season, it doesn't dry out. But right now, it's a seemingly insurmountable barrier between the herds and the good quality grass they need to survive. In places, the steep river banks are some 15 meters high. For the young calves, now seven months old, this is the greatest test of their journey so far. Instinct urges them onward. Fear holds them back. Finally, one takes the plunge. experienced anything like this frenzied maelstrom. They clamber up the steep shore to discover an extraordinary world before them. Their mothers have led them to the paradise pastures of the Maasai Mara. This land gets three times the amount of rain as the Serengeti, where they were born. Such a fertile landscape can support one of the most diverse gatherings of animal life on Earth. These mixed super herds can live together so successfully because they all take different parts of the Mara's lush plant life. Elephants strip bark from shrubs and trees. Giraffe browse on acacias. Zebra take the long, dry brush. While the blunt snouts of the wildebeest are specially adapted to pluck the green shoots which grow close to the ground. For two months, they will graze here. But the calves encounter new, frightening predators. Wild dogs are the most successful hunters on the savanna. 85% of hunts end in a kill, three times the success rate of lions. 
This time of year, young wildebeest make up most of their diet. They hunt in packs for days at a time, pursuing their quarry to exhaustion. One makes a sudden break for a mother and calf. But it's a half-hearted attempt. The wildebeest easily escape. With so much prey suddenly around, it seems the dogs have lost their sense of urgency. For two months, the Mara has played host to more than two and a half million animals. And they have sucked it dry. By November, the once fertile savannas of the Maasai Mara have been stripped of green grass. The herds must move once again. From high up in a tree, a female cheetah anxiously watches the herds leave. She has followed them on their journey across the Maasai Mara. But this is the edge of her huge home range, and as far as she will go. She has two cubs to feed. They're oblivious to their disappearing dinner. Now she'll have to rely on smaller prey. The herds head southeast, setting forth on another epic walk. It will eventually lead them back to their birthplace, the volcanoes, a thousand kilometers south of here. But a barrier blocks their path. They must once again cross the Mara. This time the calves, now nine months old, know what's in store. They'll starve if they stay here. But the herds are nervous. The wildebeest take one last drink from the precious fresh water. One forges ahead, leading the herd en masse across the 20 meter wide river. But here, at first unseen beneath the churning waters, lurks a terrifyingly familiar predator. The crocodiles come to life during this sudden feast of prey. This calf, who has traveled more than a thousand kilometers, his journey ends here. The steep bank creates a bottleneck. are trampled in the melee. Every year, thousands drown as they try to cross. finds a way through, and the crowd surge forward.
scent of rains, of grass, and the memory of a safe place to give birth lures them onward. Back to the Serengeti. Their relentless quest for food and water has taken them on a 3,000 kilometer round trip. Only one in five of the calves will return to the place they were born. Life for the wildebeest's predators has also been tough. For the lions of the rock, there's been little food. The pride has noticeably shrunk. They wait anxiously for the rains, a sign the wildebeest will soon return. In the distance, the first grazers come trickling across the plains. After months of hardship and desolation, life returns to the southern.